Well, good morning, everybody, and um, welcome to Comparative Anatomy in the Human and Canine. Uh, today's going to be just a very Cliff's Notes version of uh, similarities and differences between the two species, because, of course, as we all know, anatomy could go on forever and ever. Uh, but hopefully this will give you a taste of um, what is similar and what is different between the two species and pique your interest to learn more. So um, first we're gonna talk about some differences in the terminology between human and veterinary medicine. So in humans, we have anterior, which is to our front side, posterior to our back side, in dogs, because they're quadrupeds, it's ventral is their belly side or the side towards the floor and dorsal is their backside or the side up towards the sky. Um, and then when we talk about up and down, so superior is up towards our head and inferior is towards our feet. In the dogs, towards their head is called cranial and towards their tail is called caudal. And then our transverse planes are the same. So splitting the front half into the back half, um, both of humans and dogs. And then when we talk about our sagittal plane, um, splitting the right to the left, they call that the median plane. So that's just giving you a little bit of information on how it's similar, but the wording is slightly different. Next, we're gonna talk about the differences in our center of gravity or our center of mass. So in humans, we know that our center of mass or center of gravity sits just above the um, base of the pelvis, right around the belly button area. So if you can imagine, if we went quadruped on our hands and knees or hands and feet, that center of gravity isn't going to change. It's still going to be centered right around the front of our pelvis. However, in a dog, um, the center of gravity actually sits just behind their shoulder blades, kind of in the front half of their chest cavity. So it's very different in them versus us. And because of this, dogs tend to weight bear about 60 to 65 percent of their weight through their front limbs and about 35 to 40 percent through their hind limbs. Next, we're going to talk about the axial skeleton. So again, the main difference you have to think about is um, the orientation of gravity on our spine versus a dog's spine. So with us being upright, that center of gra or that gravity force comes straight down through our spine. With the dogs, there the gravity is acting in a perpendicular plane to their spine. In the cervical vertebrae, we both have seven cervical vertebrae, so we have the same number of vertebrae in our neck. However, in the thoracic spine, we have 12 vertebrae. The dogs actually have 13 thoracic vertebrae, but still 12 ribs. Um, and then in the lumbar spine, we have five lumbar vertebrae, and the dogs have seven lumbar vertebrae. So for me as a physical therapist going into the canine space, it was really difficult for me to document T13 or L6 or L7 for a while. So that was a little bit strange. Next, we're gonna talk about the appendicular skeleton. So um, skeletally wise, it's pretty similar. The big difference is dogs do not have collarbones or clavicles. Um, and in the shoulder joint, they are weight bearing on their shoulders where we generally are not. So um, muscularly, which we'll get to in just a minute, the um, shoulder muscles function different in dogs than they do in us. Um, when we get to the elbow, the dogs have an ankyneal process, which is an extension off of the front side of their olecranon that actually fits into that olecranon fossa. And this is because of the weight bearing status. It gives them an extra bony stability in the elbow joint to be able to hold their body weight in an upright position. The other thing to remember is that dogs actually don't stand plantigrade. So for instance, if we got onto our hands and knees, 
our metacarpals and our digits are going to be, or our phalanges are going to be parallel to the floor. But in the dogs from the carpal joint through the metacarpals, they are actually upright and in a perpendicular position to the floor. So the dogs stand on their toes and their paw pads, not actually on their metacarpals. Um, when we get to the hind limbs, the um, hip joint is actually quite similar between humans and dogs. You know, the, um, we've got the acetabulum and the head of the femur. Um, it functions very similarly. The big difference is that in dogs, the primary motion is flexion and extension in the hip. They have a little bit of internal and external rotation, but much less than we do. Then we move to the knee and the knee structurally, again, is very similar to um, the human. It can also, you may hear it referred to as the stifle in veterinary medicine. So that's the same joint as the knee is. Um, they have a patella, they have the tibia and the fibula. They do have the, um, the ACL and the PCL, but it's known as the cranial cruciate and the caudal cruciate ligament. But again, they function very similarly as they do in humans. The one thing to note is that because dogs do stand on their toes, um, their hind limb stance is similar to if we rolled up onto the balls of our feet and bent our knees and ankles slightly, that's actually the stance that they stand in. So their knee joint is always in a little bit of flexion. Then we move down to the tarsal joint or the ankle, or also known as the hock in animals. And they also have the talus, they have the calcaneus. They do actually have one extra tarsal bone than we do. Um, and if you have ever seen a dog, look at their back leg and that pointy part on the back of their leg about a third of the way up from the ground, that's actually their calcaneus. That's actually the point of their heel. So their metatarsal bones are actually very elongated. And again, they stand on their toes and their paw pads, not plantigrade like we do. Um, with the tarsal joint, Again, they have primarily flexion and extension movement in that joint. They don't really have the pronation and supination like we do in our ankle. So now we're going to talk about muscles. Um, so for our cervical and kind of our upper limb or the dog's front limb muscles, um, the big thing, a lot of the muscles are very similar. I would say probably 85 to 90% of the musculature is very similar, um, both in location and in function between the two species. The one thing is because, again, the dogs move horizontally through space, the cervical muscling is much heavier dorsally in a dog, where ours tends to be fairly balanced anterior to posterior. And that's so that they can keep their head up off the ground. The other big difference in the front limb is the shoulder musculature. So dogs do have a rotator cuff. They have um, supraspinatus, infraspinatus teres muscles, but they don't, they're not as critical to functional movement as our rotator cuff is for our shoulder. Because the dogs um, are horizontal, and the gravity is working from a top-down position in them. It's more their ventral, their belly side muscles, like their pectoralis, their subscapularis, uh, the glenohumeral ligament, all of those ventral and medial muscles act as like a shoulder sling or a hammock. And those are really their critical um, stability musculature and um, connective tissue structures. So in, for instance, in agility dogs and sporting dogs that are doing the weave poles and they're doing a lot of side to side AB and adduction in their shoulders, or they're jumping and they're landing on one foot and then twisting, we'll see injuries to those medial structures in the shoulder. Otherwise, the, um, the other interesting thing is the dogs do have a tricep muscle, but it actually has four heads in the dog. And I think that's, again, 
related to them being weight bearing in their front limbs all the time. But otherwise, the musculature is pretty similar. Then we're going to go to the um, lower limb or the hind limb musculature in the dog. And the hip and the thigh muscle um, is really quite similar between both species. They have gluteal muscles, they have biceps femoris, they have semimembranosa, semitendinosus. Um, functioning is really quite similar between the two species. Um, as you get down a little bit lower in the leg, they do have a gastrocnemius muscle, but they do not have a soleus muscle. And what we call our Achilles tendon, they refer to as the common calcaneal tendon. And the structures that make up the common calcaneal tendon are a little bit different than they are in our Achilles tendon. So there you have it in a nutshell. Um, that is the Cliff's Notes version of the anatomy between the two species. If you want to find out more, I've put up some resources here for you, um, including the um, under the orthopedic section of the Animal Physical Therapy Association. We have a special interest group in animal physical therapy, and they actually have quite a bit of information on their website about different um, topics related to uh, physical therapy for animals. If you want to get really deep into the anatomy, um, kind of the Gray's Anatomy version of the dog is called Miller's Anatomy, and it's a very detailed textbook, and you can get that through Saunders. And then if you really want to dig deep and you think you want to do this for a living or as a side hustle, um, there are several certification courses available where you can actually go through um, an educational process and get a certification in canine rehab. And if anybody has any other questions or wants to reach out to me, you can reach out to me through um, Lisa at Rising Star, R I S I N G S T A R, the letter K, number nine, dot com. Thank you so much. And I appreciated being invited to this podcast. Thank you.